We had heard Berlin was a city bursting with art and music, and we were very excited to spend some time there. Here is our list of the 25 best things to do in Berlin. The East Side Gallery is the longest remaining strip of the former dividing wall between East and West Berlin. Today, the 1.3 kilometer long wall stands as a memorial to freedom and it is covered in art and graffiti. Now we are visiting Brandenburg Gate and this gate dates back to the 18th century and it used to be one of the old gates leading into the city. Now after the wall came down in 1989 this became a symbol of unity between East and West Germany so it's an important site to visit. And just behind the gate is the Hotel Adlon. This is where Michael Jackson infamously dangled the baby. Here at Tiergarten, one of the biggest parks in the city, and it's a nice, quiet, green escape from the city center. We're loving just walking around. This park actually used to be the king's hunting grounds because it is full of wild deer and other animals. Mauer Park is a hipster hangout. Every Sunday, people flock to this park and spend the day barbecuing, listening to music, enjoying a few beers, and simply having a good time. There's a popular flea market where you can pick up old vinyls and clothes, and if you head over to the bear pit, you can catch some karaoke and musical performances. If you want to spot some cool street art, then head over to Friedrichshain. This neighborhood is home to a lot of old warehouses, turned cafes and art galleries, and they exude a very cool vibe. You can't come to Berlin and not eat a currywurst. This is the city's most popular fast food snack. The sausage is served with a ketchup and curry powder concoction. It's delicious! We're at the Reichstag building which has a pretty cool glass dome on top. This dome is actually open to visitors and it offers 360 degree views of the city but the only thing is that you need to sign up well in advance. Today we're visiting Tempelhof, a repurposed airport here in Berlin. And this is the first time I must say I've ever walked on a runway. What's so cool about this park is that it has been repurposed and now people are enjoying all kinds of leisure and recreation activities. There's a dog park, there's people inline skating, riding bicycles, jogging, walking, having picnics. This is such an awesome place just to come and hang out. So if you enjoy museums and art galleries, you'll want to visit Berlin's Museum Island. They actually have five different museums here, and if you get a daily pass for 18 euros, you get access to all five. We are now visiting the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin. It's also known as the Memorial to the Murdered Jews of Europe. And the artist's idea when he was creating this was to create a sense of confusion and uneasiness when you walk through the memorial. 
um, yet it's very orderly at the same time and that's supposed to mimic the, the Nazi regime. So we're going to be showing you this area. Charlottenburg Palace is the largest palace in Berlin and the only surviving royal residence in the city. It was home to Queen Sophia Charlotte and the interior is quite grand. Once you've browsed through the many halls and ballrooms, you should head out to the beautiful gardens in the back. Checkpoint Charlie was one of the crossing points between East Berlin and West Berlin during the Cold War. Today you can get your passport stamp with the stamps of the former sectors. Located near Alexanderplatz, the TV tower offers a great lookout over the city. Mmm, chocolate! Ritter Sport is a chocolate brand that is sold all over Germany, and while in Berlin, we couldn't resist sampling a few of the different varieties. Berlin Cathedral is located on Museum Island, and it's one of the most beautiful churches in the city. You wouldn't be able to tell by looking at it today, but the dome was severely damaged during the Second World War. If currywurst is to your liking, you'll want to check out this quirky museum devoted to Berlin's favorite sausage. One of the coolest things about this museum is that they have a giant sofa shaped like a currywurst. Renting a bike is a great way to get around the city and most places will rent out bikes for 10 euros a day. For a leisurely afternoon, hop on a boat and enjoy a tour down the river spree. Berlin and not eat a wurst or a sausage. I've just ordered myself one from the street. They have lots of local stands and this was only one euro and 35 cents. Big bite. That's so good. And I got it with mustard which is even tastier. The Friedrichshain flea market takes place every Sunday and it's a great place for people watching and a little browsing. You'll find all sorts of items for sale, ranging from old musical instruments to antique dishware. This market draws big crowds. The Germans sure know how to enjoy a hearty breakfast, and we recommend you try it too. Breakfast usually offers a wide sampling of loaves and bread rolls accompanied with various deli cuts and cheese. We couldn't resist visiting yet another cat cafe while we were in Berlin. Unlike the cafes we had previously visited in Asia, this one was quite small and only had two cats, but if you're a cat lover, you might just enjoy Pee Pee's Cats and Cafe. While in Berlin, we enjoyed a hearty meal of schnitzel. This thin strip of meat is coated in flour, eggs, and breadcrumbs before being deep fried. 
You can order it with a side of mashed potatoes or German noodles known as Spätzle. It's quite easy to get around Berlin using the U-Bahn and S-Bahn system. You can go almost anywhere, plus it's really affordable. In Berlin, there's a big Turkish population, and that means there's awesome Turkish street food. Right here, I've got a doner in front of me, and it only costs 350 euro, and this thing is a massive behemoth. I can't wait to take the first bite. And that's Berlin for you, a city that has risen from the ashes of the war, which is now bursting with art, music and life. Have you been to Berlin? We'd love to hear your favorite things about the city in the comments below. For more travel and food videos, hit subscribe! Recently, we had the opportunity to visit Europa Park, the largest theme park in Germany and the second most popular theme resort in all of Europe. This was the perfect opportunity for us to rekindle our childhood passion for rides. With over 11 different roller coasters alone, we quickly realized we had never been to such a big theme park. What we found cool was that the theme park was divided into different European countries. If you can't visit all of Europe, going to Europa Park is like getting little slivers of it all. Accommodating up to 50,000 guests per day, we were fortunate we didn't come during peak season. However, it was still crowded. Overall, the weather was perfect. The rides were fun and it is an experience we won't forget anytime soon. Well, this is a bit of a surprise. We have an eight hour wait for a flight in Frankfurt. So instead of just hanging around in the airport, which was our original plan, we decided to drop our bags off and come into the city.
which wraps up our little visit to Frankfurt. We spent maybe about three or four hours just walking around and it was really nice to just see the city without much of an agenda. I came here with quite low expectations to be perfectly honest. I had heard more or less that this is just a financial hub but it ended up being quite charming here in Frankfurt and I'm definitely going to miss Germany. I've had a wonderful time traveling in the country. Having just arrived in Germany from Thailand, we were still dealing with jet lag when we arrived at the train station in Frankfurt. So our time in Asia has officially expired. We're here in Europe, we're starting our European adventure and we're right now in Frankfurt, the train station. We're taking a train all the way to Berlin and we can't wait to get on board. So we are in a fancy little compartment here en route to Berlin. When we were booking our tickets we saw they had a special and it was only an additional 10 euros to travel in first class. So we figured since it's a pretty long trip we would splurge a little. So now we have this whole compartment to ourselves. Check it out. Traveling by train really allowed us to see the contrast between countryside and urban centers. Some of the highlights included passing by cute little hillside towns, windmills, and spotting urban graffiti. Well, I'm already enjoying my German baked goods, so I found a pretzel sandwich with salami and cheese and vegetables. So this is my little snack for the, for the trip. So the last time we took a train ride was in Thailand and it was third class. We were sitting on like hard metallic seats and what a difference this is. The seat I have here can recline all the way back. Super comfy. Get over just how quiet this train ride is. I'm used to the rattly old Indian and Thai trains. The only other train system that I've taken that is on par with this was the KTX in Korea. been one of the most comfortable train rides I've ever been on. I can't wait to do more train travel all around Europe. So we aren't having much luck with the weather today. It's really rainy here in Freiburg. It's Easter weekend, but we are out and exploring and we want to show you the city. So let's go have a tour. First impressions of Freiburg is that it's such a great city to walk around in. That's all we've been doing so far. It's very picturesque, there's cobbled streets, and it's also very historic. So thankfully the weather has shifted dramatically for the better. Earlier we had been rained out so we had to head back into the hotel because it was cold and windy. But now we're seeing a few patches of blue skies so we're going to keep exploring around Freiburg. <laughs> 